Hey, Ray Del Vecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com. And if you're building your first website or one of your first websites, you're probably wondering what platform to use to build it. And the two most affordable and popular are just plain HTML, doing it by code, or picking the most popular content management system, which is WordPress. That's a free open source software that runs your website. All you have to do is pay for domain and website hosting. So let's dig into the pros and the cons of each. Now, there's a lot of reasons you would use HTML, and the number one reason is that if you want to understand how websites operate, HTML is the language that you need to learn. That's the raw source code of all websites. You know, regardless of whatever platform is generating the website page, the output of that is always going to be an HTML page that links up CSS, which is the design of the website, and then JavaScript, which gives you the interactivity. So it's very powerful to understand how everything operates because then when you start using platforms, you can look at the source code that's generated and understand how it's doing it and what's going on behind the scenes. And then if you need to customize it, it's a lot easier. My favorite site by far to learn HTML is w3schools.com. So I'll throw a link to that in the description below. So if you're kind of a tech geek or a computer person, this might interest you. I would highly recommend you at least spend a day or two and look into HTML, how the basics of it work. Of course, there's no database with plain HTML. It's just HTML files that you upload to your web server. So because of that, it's a lot faster. And this is the main advantage that there's almost no way to get faster websites than if you're just doing plain HTML. Now, obviously, if you have a complicated application, there's almost no way to do it without a database. So a lot really depends on the type of website that you're building. So that means that HTML is best for simple, informational kind of websites. If you're just building a one-page website, any platform like Squarespace or WordPress might be overkill for that. Now, I dug into my projects folder, which I've been collecting since, I think, 2008, 2009. This is one of them. I didn't do any customizations. This is just an HTML framework that gives you all the pre-built styles. It's called HTML Kickstart. And if you look at the date here, I downloaded this in April of 2012. So let's take a look at that. And this is... A blank page here you can see that you got to add the kickstart elements to see the magic happen this next tab over here shows you all the elements that are available to you basically you're just typing with plain HTML and there's all the styling and interactivity done on the back end so this tab browsing this is likely done with JavaScript but I used this platform to build one very simple website you can see how you do lists here you got menus, tables, and if we scroll down, they have even cooler things like these icons. This is kind of the beauty and the hard part about the web is that there's thousands of these options that you can choose to build your website that it's so overwhelming. And then at some point, I realized that if you were going to build a website that has multiple pages and one that needs a blog, it's kind of impossible to do that with HTML. I mean, it is possible, but it's such a pain to write blog posts with a code editor. WordPress is way easier to manage a website that has dozens or hundreds or maybe even thousands of posts and pages. That's where the database comes in. One common question that I hear from people that come from code is, if I create an about page on WordPress, where is that HTML file on the web server? And it doesn't work that way. With WordPress, you have templates. The templates generate a wide array of pages, and all the page content is stored in the database. So you have a database entry for your About page, and you have a template which runs your About page along with a bunch of other pages, and that's what generates the HTML on the front end. And the power of that is that you have a lot more design flexibility when it comes to themes. You can switch out your themes, and in essence, that's kind of like changing different templates and CSS files. So you're gonna get a different design, but all your content stays within the database. So that is completely separated from your themes and kind of like that kickstart library that we just saw. WordPress is also open source. Now WordPress adds a different level because you have a database, you need to access that database with code and they use PHP. I know that Facebook was originally built with PHP. I don't know if they've switched it over in the last couple of years. But PHP is a powerful scripting language. All themes and plugins are built with PHP along with CSS and JavaScript files. So anytime you download a plugin or a theme, you can check out every single file that is being used with that theme and you can learn how to customize your WordPress website with code. Ultimately, you got to figure out which is the best for your scenario. I always vote for WordPress nowadays, even though I'm a code guy. And the reason for that is you have to make this trade-off between optimization versus ease of use. 
And when you're managing multiple websites, WordPress makes it a lot easier. There's a lot more tools built into it. And of course, like I said, because it's open source, you can learn all these things and you can do your own customizations with HTML, CSS, PHP, and JavaScript. You're not limited with WordPress unless you don't understand code. And that's why I put the or not in here because you don't need to know any code to run a WordPress website, even though it helps. The entire goal of WordPress, and especially the way that they're developing now with the full site editor, they're trying to make it as easy as possible for beginners. If you'd like to check out a full tutorial going through that full site editor, I'll link it up in the top right here. I'd like to hear from you. You know, what do you think is best? What do you think is easier? How did you get into websites and what options did you look at, whether it was some type of code framework or a bigger platform? It's so interesting to hear your stories because we often just do things our own way and think that that is the way. And that really is not the way that web design and creating websites work. There are so many different options for it. So what I recommend that you do is if you want to learn WordPress, go to the link shown here. That's also in the description below, websiteprofitcourse.com slash WP101. That's a free WordPress training series where I take you through each step. I go a little bit more in depth into the back end of WordPress, the files that are installed, how the templates work, along with a tour of your admin area and how you manage your website. If you start enjoying the process of creating websites the same way that I did, check out my homepage, WebsiteProfitCourse.com, and you can download a giveaway, 15 tools to start your web design business. Also, browse around and check out my blog. I got a bunch of other tutorial videos and blog posts on there to help you out. All these links and more will be in the description below. Last but not least, give this video a thumbs up if it helped you out. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you want to see more WordPress and web design freelancing videos. And like I said before, leave a comment one or two lines below about how you got started with websites and what choices that you were looking at. Thanks so much for watching and I will link up a couple other videos here if you want to keep on learning.